Hello everyone, uh, my name is Uttam Kinyech and currently I am Software Engineering 1 at Geekians. So today we are going to talk about what's new in Flutter 3.3, right? So we have come across the Flutter update of Flutter 3.0, but now we are going to discuss about what's new in this Flutter 3.3. Okay, so let's get going. And what we are going to cover in uh, today's video is that we are going to cover about the framework updates, we are going to cover about the design updates, and we are going to see what's new in the Flutter's graphic engine. And there are some bonus updates that we are going to discuss too. So the first update that I'm going to talk about is the framework update. So in the framework updates, uh, there is something called as the global selection, right? So let us say that we are going to build a web application, right? So in the web application, we were not able to, you know, select all of the text editors or all of the text widgets. So what the Flutter did in this update is that here you can see uh, one of the example of the global selection where I have three rows, basically selectable row one, selectable row two, and selectable row three, right? So uh, before the Flutter 3.3, we were not able to select all of these text, all of these three texts. Now with the help of Flutter 3.3, we will be able to select all of these three texts and even more. So how to do that? So to do that, you what we can do is basically uh, uh, the three text widgets, we have to wrap it with the selection area. So by wrapping it with the selection area, uh, the Flutter will automatically will allow the user to select all of these text that you want to select. Now about the next update that we are going to talk about is the text input plugin, right? So uh, we know that uh, sometimes we need a, a bold font or we need an italics, right? So the Flutter gave us an option to have a rich text editor. So with the help of the text input plugin, now what happened is that in this new plugin, we'll be able to uh, receive the granularity text. So whenever the user is going to type, at the same time, the Flutter is going to, you know, automatically uh, re-render it to the bold or the italics according to what, how you are going to code it. So if you can see uh, in the code here that uh, there is a small sentence which says the quick brown for fox jumps over the lazy lazy dog, right? So uh, this is a normal font, right? So when I'm going to, uh, you know, type it along the way, what does Flutter is going to do that? So whichever the text we need it in a bold font, let us say the lazy okay, and it's going to do, do it automatically with the help of text input plugin. Now let us go to the next update. And if you go to the next update, so we have all been using the iPad, right? So the iPad has an, and one of the amazing feature that is using the Apple Pencil, you can just scribble it out. So if you open the text editor or any of the notepad application in the iPad and you just scribble it out, then the Apple iPad will recognize itself that, okay, he has written hello. So if you can see a small image over here, which says a scribble demo, and one of the user is just going to scribble it out, it says like, hello, Flutter right? So he is going to use the human language or that is H-E-L-L-O and just scribble it out. So the Flutter also with the help of Flutter 3.3, now the, you, uh, you know, uh, when we are going to develop an application for the iPad, it, the Flutter gives you an automatically the scribble update. So how to do that? You just have to, uh, so the, this feature is enabled by default on the Cupertino text field, text field and editable text field. So you don't have to specify any other package. Now going to the design updates. So what's new in this design updates, right? So we all have been using the material design two and from the one, now the, they have introduced material design three, right? So in short, we have called it as a MD3. So in the MD3, what we have is one of the amazing features that is the medium and the large app bars, right? So we all have been using the app bar and to improve, uh, to increase this height, we used to give a height specification in the app bar, then we need to adjust it out, right? But now the uh, MD3 itself will give us an update saying that, okay, if you need a medium app bar, just specify it as a medium app bar. Then let us say that you need an large app bar, then you can directly use the large app bar, which you can see in the image here itself. And it, uh, the MD3 also give you an update on the icon buttons, right? So before it was just, you know, an outline and just a background and the opacity, but now you have a lot of advanced UI uh, changes. So you, you have a normal icon button, then you have an icon button with different backgrounds, you have an icon button with the different colors, and even with the different opacity too. 
now uh, there is something called as a chip so we all have we all have been using the instagram and we all have been using the swiggy so you can see there is a filter option which says like rating 4.0 plus and then you have something like a wedged or non wedged selection right so the mt3 will also give you an, an advanced feature of uh, advanced feature design right so now in the filter you can actually you know uh, edit it out the background so when you when a user is going to select just change the background to the color so here you can see in the image there is a washer dryer and there is a ramp access right so the ramp access has been selected and its background color has been changed let us say that uh, the disabled uh, let us say that some of the feature is not enabled right now so you can also give something like a disabled uh, button here too so these are all the chip feature that have been introduced in the material design 3 Okay, going to the next one, we have the one of the amazing uh, the Flutter, the Impeller uh, graphic engine, right? So we all have been using the Flutter right now. It's been like five years and you all have come across a jank issue, right? So this jank issue is nothing but, uh, let us say that you have a list style of widgets and there is a lot of, lot of image processing going on and there is a particular uh, jank. Jank is nothing but uh, the app is going to not render the particular animation, right? So there is going to be a phase where your app is just going to be uh, in a freeze mode. So here, if you can see, uh, when, if I'm going to trace it out, and uh, so whenever there is a performance level, here you can see there is a red, uh, a red, a red indicator saying that okay, there is a jank, meaning that there is a slow in the animation, right? So how did the perform or how did the Flutter overcome this feature? So to overcome this feature, Flutter, is, uh, Flutter introduced something called as an impeller graphic engine, right? So this impeller graphic engine is basically a, uh, an, uh, so it's an override to a ski rendering. So it's still in the uh, beta stage, but what are its advantages? So main advantages are like a transit anim animation, right? Your animation will be very smooth and you can also, you know, modify the refresh rate. Let us say that I want my refresh rate to go up to 120 hertz rather than 60 hertz. We can also do that. And there is also a shader compilation, right? So th there might be a time like uh, your app is just on the freeze mode and you're not able to animate some stuff. So a shader compilation uh, will also help you to overcome those jank issue too. Now, Coming to the bonus updates, so we all know that Flutter uh, it is very easy to add a dependency in the Visual Studio and uh, before Flutter 3.3 it was very difficult for us. So what we had to do is like uh, just press the shortcut and you can see in the image we uh, before the Flutter 3.3 it was just like an individual uh, package name, right? It, it used to be like HTTP then it is used to be like a path, then it is it, it used to be like a crypto. But now with the help of Flutter 3.3, what we can do is just give a comma in between whatever the package you need. So here, let us say HTTP, path, crypto, and just press enter. All of these packages will be added automatically. Now uh, about the Go Router package. So you know that Go Router is uh, been one of the popular package for the navigation. So we all have been using the Go Router. So it has the routes and the subroutes. Now the Go Router will also be uh, useful for the asynchronous code, right? So let us say that you have the, some of the process going on and you want some of the navigations to occur after some of the results result has to happen. So with the help of the asynchronous code, the version 4.3 Go Router will also be able to do that. So these are the some of the updates that I wanted to talk about in Flutter 3.3 and thank you for watching this video.